Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is July 31st, 2015. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Welcome. We have lots to talk about and it's a blue moon. But first, before we get to that, I want to explain the flowers. These are flowers that, aren't they beautiful? That are left over from this week's wake and funeral for my sister-in-law, Mary. So this, this broadcast is dedicated to her, my husband's sister, Mary. She passed away after a battle with cancer. So um, we're thinking of her and we thank all of her friends and family for being there for her family and for all of us. And so we're doing what we will love to do. That's what Mary would want us to do. So let's get quilting. We'll put those there. They're just too beautiful not to look at. Um, a blue moon. So what is a blue moon? It is a, actually oftentimes it's not so blue, but it's when there's a full moon twice in a month. And it's happening this July. Tonight is the blue moon, is a moon, full moon. There was another full moon earlier in the month. And the next time it'll happen is in January of 2018. The, according to my, my Google searches, the blue can be caused by what they think are volcanic eruptions and the gases that will cause it to look blue. It's very rare, according to NASA. Oftentimes it's more likely to look red because of the same reason that we see sunsets with, um, I guess, the, the light from the sun going through particles in the air, the aerosols, and makes it look redder. So, very, it's somewhat uncommon to have two, two full moons in a month. We're having one tonight, and it's even rarer still to see it when it's actually blue. And so you will hear the phrase, once in a blue moon, it means something that doesn't happen very often. So certainly never applies to me when I'm talking about quilting or fiber, and I think a lot of you are the same way. Um, but I wanted to mention that we have a blue moon. So let's get quilting. You can see behind me the disappearing pinwheel. I think this is our third week of working on it, and you'll see that I've given myself permission to change my mind. And I encourage everyone to do so if what you're working on isn't turning out quite the way you had envisioned it, or maybe not even envisioned it. What I discovered, for those of you who might have seen last week, I was only using the gray as a background, and I discovered that there wasn't enough contrast. So I'm still keeping what I had, but I'm throwing in some other plain colors to complement my Amy Butler Violet Free Spirit Charm Pack. And I'm liking it so far. Look at the contrast. And it's very similar to several of you have sent in your examples of Disappearing Pinwheel. And they're beautiful and they have a lot of contrast. So you are all the inspiration for this. And I have lots of emails to share with everyone. And, um, and I actually still have plenty of these to go. But I did, I've got lots of pinwheels here to get moving on. So this is what I'm going to be working on tonight. I hope you all have a project. That's what Fibercast is all about. It's all about us spending 60 minutes together working on it. And it could be actually with our hands doing something fiber filled. It could be literally looking at a pattern or dreaming, looking at a magazine or just simply drinking tea. Whatever you want, this is your hour to kick off the weekend and let your mind focus on something fun and uh, different and get in that meditative state that we often talk about. There is nothing like giving your brain and your body a rest um, from all of our hectic and plugged in lives. I know because all of you have, we found each other online and in the digital universe. I know that you are like me in that we're over plugged in. Well, I'll speak for myself. I'm feeling a little over plugged in sometimes. It just never ends. And I found myself this week actually not looking at my phone for several hours at a time. And it was refreshing. <laughs> I highly recommend doing it more often.
I finally got out in the yard. I had we we had weeds out back that were literally five and a half feet tall, taller taller than me. And I keep thinking, oh, what a shame that good soil went up into those weeds rather than something to eat or something pretty. And my roses out back are not doing well at all. And I usually have pretty good luck with roses. And I don't know, I didn't weed around them. I don't know if they got crowded out, too wet. I certainly wasn't around to spray them with anything, and I usually do for insect control. Um, I don't ever really augment the soil with them, other than I do give them food, I guess. So anyway, that's kind of a mystery. You'll see, again, I wanted to show you what I've been doing. I already finished another spool, the one that the dog chewed, remember that we started last week? And you guys had some good ideas about that. And, and so others have had the same issue. The suggestion was to use bobbins and fill up a bobbin as far as I could until it broke, and then fill up another bobbin. That way um, I would know that I had good string. But in the end, dog really didn't chew that deeply into that. So that one's done. This one we're going to finish tonight. This one, you can see we're almost finished. So that's going to feel good. I'm so tempted to go buy some Aurifil because I love that stuff. But for this quilt, I am just going with what I've got. Including, as you can see, I went into my my stash, and I found some orange and some purple. I found enough for one black square, which I'm doing now. See how much more contrast that has? That'll give it another pop somewhere else. And Deb, if you're out there, that was so nice to see you this week and to talk about your quilt. I want to show your quilt. And I had an idea. Um, and let's look at that quilt together. There are so many pictures here. Okay, getting there. Now I can't find it. Okay, let's see. Well, look at this one. We'll get to Debs in a minute. Karen, KB, who's out there in Pennsylvania, check this out. She says, here's my disappearing pinwheel. This is on the Facebook Simply Colorful page. She says, check out this. It's for her grandchild who is to be born any day now. That is just perfect, KB. I love the contrast. I love it. Fun quilt for our first grandchild due in a few weeks. She also says thank you to Heirloom Quilts by Ellie, who's bending over backwards to get it quilted and back to her in time for the baby shower. Oh, I bet. You whip that up, too. That is just beautiful. And look at all your seams just match beautifully. Where is okay? So Deb, Deb shared this picture, and she and I had a good laugh when we saw each other earlier this week. And now Deb, I feel bad for laughing because I like it more than I had remembered. So Deb and I were were lamenting about how the gray with our modern fabrics. Both of us aren't used to doing this kind of quilt. But you know what? This grows on me, Deb. And if you do what Karen suggested, which I think you're going to, which is group the darkest, like the three black ones down in the corner, and then slowly go up to your lighter ones over in this corner. You might, rather than, I know you did them by color here, 
but you might get a more pleasing look by going from dark to light up and across. And Deb is going to put this in her back porch. She's building on a screened-in porch near the pool, I might add. And she's going to have a pile of quilts for when she and her children and her grandchildren are out there enjoying the cool fall evenings. Doesn't that sound lovely? So I really like that, Deb. Oh, and the one thought I had, in addition to changing the layout from dark to light or dark to light or dark to light, however you it, it appears, another idea would be to put literally sashing in between, a very light white sashing or off white or very light gray. Anywho, I love that people are doing this. Isn't this fun? And Sandy says she likes the gray and it makes a difference. Oh, see? And it gr it's growing on me too, as does Carrie says that. Kelsey, hi, welcome back from Ireland. Kelsey is doing, she says, so I'm late to the party. But I started making the disappearing pinwheel blocks a few months ago. You were early to the party. She says she'll just continue on with those and finish a UFO. She's doing the churn dash variation. Oh, excellent. A couple of other people are doing the churn dash variation. I love that, Kelsey. That's going to look so modern. Is it a charm pack? It must be. And I recognize some of those. Love it. Speaking of Kelsey and Ireland, I'm not sure I ever showed everyone the picture uh, that she took when she was at the Blarney Castle. So I hope you kissed the stone for good luck. And I may have shown this on the little screen, but I want to show it again. So they yarn bombed the front of the castle, the, the walk up to it. I think that's so cool, Kelsey, and the fact that you actually took it. I think, I think that's your family down front. That's a riot. Hello to Sarah out there, speaking of knitting. Sarah came by after work tonight, and so Sarah, <coughs> oops, excuse me, Kokonowski, she's been here before doing the dolls. And she does all sorts of quilting, and she's really a, a master fiber artist. She is doing, speaking of yarn, she's in the process of taking a very in-depth knitting certification through webs out in Northampton. And she has, to the point of when she's done, she'll be able to make her own patterns and literally measure and, and make knit things that really fit. And for example, one of her first projects was literally mittens. And you know, all of us, or many of us, have been making mittens forever. And we just follow a regular pattern, and I never do a swatch, I must admit. Heck, I don't even use pins when I quilt, right? And sometimes, it, depending on the fabric and which needles I pick, the mittens will either be a little smaller or they'll be a little bigger, and then I decide based on the size who to give them to. You ever do that? Anyway, Sarah is learning literally how to swatch, how to change needles and fiber to get just the size she wants. So she put on the, the mitten that she had made herself today, and it fits beautifully. It's longer like she likes here. The, the thumb fit just perfectly, no excess, but it wasn't too snug. It fit her fingers just beautifully. And she said every step along the way, they're going to measure, they measure themselves, and then they knit and adjust the pattern accordingly. Next up are socks. And I just think that's going to be really fun to hear how she goes along. And maybe we can invite her on and share with us everything she creates. Because she has deadlines. So this, this is a real class that she does. I think some of it's online. Some of it may be out in Northampton in person. I'm not sure about that though. And um, but she literally has to be at a certain spot in her knitting for each lesson. Which is a great way to get things done, right? Like a personal trainer for your fiber. So that was fun. 
Is anyone else out there knitting? Actually, I wanted to show Sandra, now that I talk out loud, Sandra is making blankets, hats, and footsies for a giveaway that were so bright. Hopefully that's on the Simply Colorful Facebook page. I'll go find it when we want to take a break here. Big shout out to Carrie Creswell and her daughter Brenna. They were a huge support this week in, week in actually watching the house during the wake and funeral. My sister-in-law, aside from when she went to college, lived in this town her whole life. I think that's a true statement. And she played basketball in college. She's been an she was an athlete her whole life. She played basketball in college, and then she coached basketball for her whole life. And so the number of people that came and uh, celebrated her life that were involved in basketball was truly um, heartwarming. Stories of all of the kids, the three kids, all of them play basketball or track and all of their teammates were there. Past teammates, past parents of, of kids that Mary had coached, grandparents, just amazing. So shout out to Carrie. I did put a program in the mail for you, so you'll get that any day now. That's pretty, but you know what? That's not going to have a lot of contrast, so that'll be a more subtle one. So another thing that I did today for work that I'm very pleased with is, and you may hear the humming over here. I, I apologize for that. I didn't think of that. But it's a new air conditioner. And I am thrilled. I finally have a little place here that is really cool. I don't know if I'll be so happy when the electric bill comes, but right now it makes me very happy. I think I'm just going to keep sewing these pinwheels. Kind of fun. Oh, I hear it. Who's out there? Oh, Sarah, speaking of the knitting. Sarah, I just told everyone about your knitting curriculum and how maybe if we could, we would love to invite you on and have you show us what you make. Very impressive. Well, Sarah writes, she says, I just tuned in. I love the blocks on your board. They look great on screen. Thank you. So Sarah came over after work tonight, and she helped me look at the ones that had more contrast and sort of gave me the idea or the permission to go into my stash and create more contrast. I'm glad you're on, Sarah. I hope the steak was good. Who else is out there? Oh, Marquet. Hi, Marquet. Oh, it's downloading. It's titled Full Moon and Fibercast. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Stop it. It looks like a store. Oh, see, it's a really good air conditioner. It turns itself off when it gets to temperature. So Marquet writes, I am working on this still, dot, 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 but I, am, but I am making progress. I'm finally getting my material out of totes and onto my shelf. I am really liking it so far. So am I. I cannot wait to show everyone on here. She says she still has two big totes to empty, empty onto the shelf. She says she hopes everyone is having a great Friday evening. It has been and still is a beautiful day here in the mountains of Kentucky where I am tuning into Simply Colorful. Isn't that wonderful? See you there, smile emoticon. I have been enjoying all the full moons we have had and will be watching tonight also. 
hoping this will help me be more productive. And I love the gray, she says. Happy sewing and have a great weekend, Marquet. Oh, Marquet, this is looking great. Who doesn't want a studio organized like that? I was just saying that this afternoon. I have piles everywhere. Look at you. <gasps> and look at the tote and look at the full moon. Oh, the full moon as viewed from Kentucky mountains. Thank you, Marque. And Jen from down under. She says, good morning, Lynn. Jen Dale, hi. Not sewing anything this morning yet, just having a coffee and watching as it's only 8 a.m. here. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too. You too. So glad to see that you're on. Judy and Karen. Ooh. So, Karen, we already showed you Karen's... Um... Oh, my goodness. Karen, you have been busy creating beautiful things. So a couple of weeks ago, my sister Karen, when she was visiting my mother, noticed that my mother needed a new quilt on her bed. The old one was beautiful, but it really was wearing out. And so Karen, remember, designed one that had storm at sea? Well, this girl gets things done. Look at that. KB, I love it. I can I love that design. I love the colors. She says she's working on the border tonight. Oh, send us a picture when the border's on. That is great. Delwyn, also down in New Zealand. She says, hi. I've still been watching you from afar lately, but hope to watch you live this afternoon. Well, I hope you are live. And thank you for watching from afar. That works, too. I'm busy foundation piecing a large scrap happy diamonds wall hanging. She says, enjoy listening to your Fibercast and listening to the different lifestyles from the States. Keep up the great work, Delwyn in New Zealand. Oh, and I love what you're doing. Let's see if I turn it. Oh, wow. That is pretty. Greens and pinks. Isn't that pretty? Now, I'm, oh, you have to keep sending us updates. So if those are paper piece, scrappy, happy diamonds wall hanging. Oh, you're going to have to show us what you put in the, how you finish it off. Whoops. Huh, how fun. Norma, cousin Norma. Marquet's out there. Norma says, hey, Lynn, sorry I haven't written in a bit, but I'm going to be gone out on Friday nights. I for oh, and I forget to write to you, so I made sure I didn't forget tonight. Thank you. I haven't been doing any sewing yet, just yet. We're doing work around the house, and we have a guy that's supposed to add on to our house, and we're going to make the living room bigger. Oh, that's wonderful. Is that why you took your deck off? Inquiring minds want to know. That makes sense, because the deck looked like it was in pretty good shape. Anywho, she says, we've painted the big bedroom and taken the old wallpaper off the kitchen, which was hard for me because I loved it. Oh, I bet. Can't wait to get started on painting the sewing room and putting closet doors on and adding a couple of shelves. I'll have to wait a bit for stuff for the walls because I want to find things that are about sewing. Ooh, I'll be on the lookout for you. Hmm, that sounds fun. Just pick the right things, right? Um, I sure love the quilt you're doing for the summer. I would have loved to do that along, but wanted to wait until I get all of the house stuff done. That makes complete sense first, and that way I can just enjoy sewing later on, and maybe next summer I will be able to do the summer quilt along. That's a plan. But I'm sure looking forward to the new mystery quilt that you and Bonnie Hunter will have this winter. Sorry the letter was so long. Oh, it's never too long. Hope you have a nice weekend, and I will watch tonight's Fibercast later tonight. Well, good. Well, hopefully you're watching this either later on Friday or on Saturday, and I love to hear about your remodeling and waiting to do the quilts. I think that's a great idea. It'll be a treat for you. You'll get things done, and then you'll be able to sew. Oh. 
Trinity, welcome Trinity has joined us, Lauren has joined us, Bonita, and Anne, and Brenda, welcome. All right, and Lori and CJ, okay. Let's get back to sewing. Okay, I've got that, that, this one. Jean out there sent me a note. Actually, a couple of you have sent the note about the new pinwheel. Oh, and we should say this disappearing pinwheel pattern is coming from Jenny Doan out at the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And it's, I watched one video of her doing it. And apparently there are more videos and more variations. Like we see Kelsey's doing the churn dash, and we heard last week there are even more. And there's also, a, I want to say, a fifth video. And I must admit I haven't looked at it yet. So if anyone is doing any other variations, let us know. It's a pretty versatile approach. Norma, I'm glad you mentioned the mystery quilt. Oh, look at what we just did. Doo -doo -doo -doo. We should have a little bell that rings. Ding, 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 ding. Like when the angel gets its wings. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Can you tell I'm in a good mood? I'm not hot. Everything's work. The technology's working. Okay. Here is another... thing of thread that we're going to finish off. I must admit I'm liking my Bernina more and more. Just keeps to just keep on ticking, you know? I I do oil it every time I redo the bobbin. I oil the oh, the hook. I don't do anything in here. I've never done that. Someday I should learn how to do that. band is playing in the basement. I don't know if you can hear them. Although they're playing, they seem to be taking more breaks. They have not been playing in, gee, has it been two months maybe? Maybe six weeks. Oh. Last couple of months of Mary's life, time just stood still. And then when you look back, you realize it really wasn't all that long, unfortunately. She fought to the end. Isn't that pretty? That one might also recede a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just keep piling them up. I do like that. Oh, here's a fun one. So, can you believe tomorrow is the first day of August? My cousin Ben's birthday. He's still in his 40s. Probably not polite to talk about other people's age. But the reason I mention it is his older brother... <laughs> My younger cousin turns 50 at the end of the month. 
That just doesn't seem possible. That's the cousin who, one summer when I was 13 and he was younger, <laughs> we mucked out the pond. The pond is a very shallow, man-made body of water up um, on the property. It was man-made 100 years ago, I think, plus or minus. Anyway, as, as happens, the land is filling in and weeds are growing in and um, there are lots of pond lilies still. And you can still, there's still water and there's still the flowing water and it goes down to the dam. But when we were little, we thought, oh, we could, we could redredge the, not redredge the pond, but we could pull out. We could extend the life of the pond by pulling out the uh, weeds. And so we, it was called mucking. And my uncle actually had a mud, mud sucking machine. We never used that. We just literally would wade in with the boat. Oh, and I can remember the eels. Ugh. Would inevitably get pulled into the boat with us. Ugh. Oh, I didn't like those things. But we would literally pull up big things of weeds with mud, and we would cart them over to the side of the pond and put them out there. <laughs> that was a long time ago. That's pretty. tell you about last weekend. For those of you who couldn't find me Friday night, I'm really sorry. I thought I had posted the link on Facebook so that it would just show up on Friday. But as you know, I recorded last week's session on Thursday because out of the blue I had to go out to La Jolla. And so I'm sorry I missed people. In fact, that's what I need to pull up or some, there were some great, some more tips. Ooh, this is going to be pretty. Look at this one. Hmm. That almost, the green almost glows. down with this bobbin or this thread. Carol, if you're out there, I hope your stomach is feeling better every day. So you won't believe this. Well, you might. My sister-in-law, Carol, had appendicitis, emergency appendix surgery last week. Her appendix actually burst. But they fixed her up. Finish this up. Ta da Finished another one. Another thing of thread. Love this. Okay, I'm going to go back to this blue one. Oops. That's not good.
Oh, I should have brought up a, a leaf of kale. So the garden is starting to produce. I hope your gardens are, for those of you up on this hemisphere. Um, unfortunately, well, we have a little bit of lettuce from a second planting, but most of it's fully bolted at this point. We have Swiss chard that's huge, and we have kale. The leaves, honestly, one leaf is the size of that square. I'm not kidding you. It's it's that big. It's like a palm. It's a palm leaf. And fortunately, we grew two types of kale. So there's that type, which I have not I have not cooked at all. Bob has eaten it raw. Um, but if anyone has any good ideas for kale, let me know. My mother makes a delicious kale with sausage soup. That's yummy. In fact, Mom, if you're out there, I want to get that recipe. <laughs> Remind me next time I'm down. I'm coming down soon. I won't be there for tomorrow's party, but I should be there Monday morning for your doctor's appointment, but I'll call you this weekend so as not to completely surprise you. <sighs> so kale, the kale crop is awesome. Swiss chard's doing great. The beans, unfortunately, are great, but we have let them, we didn't catch them in time, so most of them are too big right now. We had one really good batch of them and now so tomorrow I'm going up and I'm going to pick out every last one of them the big ones and I'm hoping we can get another flush of them before those are done but I think we may have goofed it's just such a shame when the plant puts all its energy into making great big fat beans green beans so here is another one I'm going to do instead of gray I'm using off-white muslin because I had it in the closet and I'm going back to the first step which again if you haven't the the place to find this pattern is on YouTube just search for Jenny Doan the Missouri Star Quilt Company disappearing pinwheel and she shows you how her trick for doing this which is brilliant you literally start with two squares, 10 inches by 10 inches, and you put them right sides together, and you sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way around them. You can sew right off the edge. should be speed. Actually, I'll do that in a minute. I should be chain piecing these. I'd be saving thread. Here's another one. I'm just going to do light on light, or just sew around the edge, I'm sorry, with white. Okay, oh, and here's another one that's so pretty. I love this. Isn't that pretty? It's like a William Morris print. This is so light, I may regret putting it with a light one. Hmm. Hmm. I could do it with a purple one. I should do that. Do that instead. 
I don't think it'll hurt to have a few more dark purples in there. Now there's a darker one that I'll put with this white one. And then I'll I'm really hoping that by next Friday, I have this all together. That'll be my goal. And then we can look at doing snowballs in the corner. Oh, look at this. I ran out of bobbin thread. Oh. Hang on. <laughs> How many did I do? Let's see. I did a lot without bobbin thread. Oh, you guys. That's funny. I was jib-jabbering. Who's out there? And then I'll switch the bobbin. Ooh, speaking of kale, Maureen in Pennsylvania comes to the rescue. Um, Maureen says... I make kale chips. Lightly spray the baking sheet with oil, probably, or nonstick spray. Lay leaves out, spray lightly again, add any seasoning you like, and bake. Just watch carefully, they can burn easily. No sewing. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. I am going to do that. Like, so I can put salt on them or herbs. I will do that, and I'll let you know how it goes next week. Grace. Grace talks about Jenny's fifth disappearing. She says, I won some free fabric, and the disappearing pinwheel wasn't working, so I made, made Jenny's disappearing number five. Oh, how neat. So remember I was just talking about disappearing number five. This is it, and that is very interesting. I hope you can see that. I like that. And I know what you mean about those two fabrics. Or no, actually it's one, it's several different fabrics. It's very subtle. Thank you for sending that. Where are you, Grace? Do you say where you're located? It's so nice to have you join us. Oh, and a Joyce. Hi, Joyce Long. She says, hi, Lynn. I just wanted to drop you a line to let you know how much I enjoy Fibercast. Thank you. And seeing all the beautiful quilts. After your email, I've decided to do Jenny's Disappearing Nine Patch Twist Five. I haven't started yet, but hope to soon. Have a great weekend, Joyce from Maryland. You too, Joyce. That'll be great. Can't wait to see what, you, what colors you do. Ah, oh, hope I, let's see. I don't want to miss anyone. Oh, so it was Joyce. So last week, Joyce, you were the one who wrote about Jenny Doan's Pinwheel 5 Twister. Yep. So that's it. I can't wait to see more of those. Sandy Grog, love your notes. Thank you. I think that's about it. Now, did I see maybe a text just came in? Oh, my. Ooh. Sarah. I remember Sarah went home to, to have steak. She says the steak was yummy, and so was the scotch. Oh, that's good. I would love to share my knitting progress on Simply Colorful. Yay! Yay, we would love that. Okay. I think that's it. On my way home. Whoa! So Jean is not on live. She says she wrote this morning, and I'm just seeing it. She said, I'm wrapping up five memorial quilts and two graduation quilts, 
So lots of binding and labels to do. And she says she's off to tour Dartmouth. Think the girls will want to stop at the pine tree on the way home? Oh, definitely. The, they won't be, the, the car will just automatically go there. They won't have a choice. Oh, just seeing that. Sorry, Jean. And hi, Carrie, up in Maine. I hope your summer pad is doing great. So let me get some more thread on my bobbin. I have this little brush that came with the machine that I is good at just getting the lint out. Clunk. Ooh, and lots of oil from the last time. Earlier tonight. Excuse me, I have hiccups. Oh, I wish you were here with me to know how comfortable the room is. <laughs> it's just not hot. Check it out. Another one done. Ding, ding. So now we'll go to this orange one. This one's pretty full. Remember I was doing the Clemson quilts a while back? That's why I have this orange and purple around. It's going to be fun thinking about more quilts I have one niece going to Worc in Worcester, to Worcester State, and another one heading up to Ansel St. Anselm's College. I have a nephew still over in at West Virginia. So that's a, a blue and gold. Kay sent us a picture of the blue moon from her house. I will post a picture of blue moon from here when I hang, when I hang up, after Fibercast is done. I'm not going to put any more oil in there because I just did earlier tonight. Okay. redo it as many of these as we can. What a fun way to spend a Friday night. I have thoroughly enjoyed Fibercast tonight. I would have gone without noticing my thread was gone. <laughs> oh, 
here's a pretty one. Do that bright one. Against the white, that'll be really good contrast. So I'm thinking for this more modern looking quilt that my quilting itself is going to be straight lines. To play with that a little bit. This is just going to be a kick around quilt. so many of these blocks with blue in it, maybe I could find a navy blue for a couple of them. Hmm. Oh, that one's done. Okay. That. So again, my goal is to have all of these blocks done and sewn together by next Friday, or at the very least all done, and we can do the whole webbing together next week. And then it's time to think about, ooh, fall and what we're going to do. Ooh, I see someone. I just heard someone chime in. Who's out there? Whoops. Hey, Jean. She says, no pine tree, but I made it home just as you were starting. Oh, good. So happy to see you so bubbly and upbeat. You are making quick work of of this project and it is so pretty. Thank you. Well, it's not five memorial quilts and two graduation quilts, but it is. I'm just going to plow through it. And I do. I feel I feel relieved. Did you hear about the kale chips, too? We have to make those. Well, good. So, Jean, I hope you, so you've been with us. And you heard about Sarah, how she's going to show us her, tell us all about her sewing master's class. I mean, her knitting master's class. I haven't heard from Chris and Abby because they are on their way for Vacation on the Cape, I believe. So what should we all do? We should all, in addition to taking 60 minutes and doing whatever we wanted to do during Fibercast, we should all, after Fibercast, go out and look at the moon and maybe make a wish or just look at the beauty, see if it leaves blue. And I'll do the same. And have a great week of sewing. I think we're about, it's about time. Maybe I'll finish these two. Two more scenes. Hang on. I don't want to say goodbye yet.
All right, so let me count. Before I sign off, let's count and see what we have left to do. That one's sewn together, so that's one, two, and lots of raw edges, three, four, five, excellent. So those are all sewn together. So those need to be completely done, right? Five of those. Then we have one, two, three, four, five pinwheels, more. And we have one pinwheel that I have to do, still do, okay? And then still have one, two, three, four more squares. And then that's it. Very doable, especially with my AC here. I could be quilting till midnight. <laughs> Again, thanks for joining me. Thanks for um, just being creative and being out there. Go look at the moon, and we'll see you. And be creative for the week. And we'll see you next Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everyone. <laughs>